of the table this season. They finished third last season. They demolished Inverness last weekend. This weekend, they were in Glasgow to play Partick Thistle. Alistair Lamont was at Fairhill for Sports Seat. The home side are looking to get back to winning form following last weekend's defeat at Aberdeen. Out go the suspended Sean Welsh and David Amu also, while well, Chris Erskine and Chris Doolan come in. Hearts have little reason to change a team that beat Inverness Cali Thistle 5-1 last Saturday and indeed Robbie Nielsen fields exactly the same starting 11 as he looks for a similar performance. Ziggy Gordon over the head of the diminutive Lawless out for Booth though now Aziz he's passed Patterson Aziz has done well well he should have picked out a teammate it looked like he was trying to find the top corner he did so well to get past Callum Patterson but well that would have been some finish if he'd managed to squeeze that into the top corner Suter up for Salmon now it's Nicholson Salmon's through on goal can he get the shot away he does, and it's deflected wide. Terrific entertainment, it really is going from end to end. Connor Salmon might have taken the shot on earlier, and the delay just allowed Thistle to get back and get the block in. Sam Nicholson to take the corner. A quarter of an hour gone at Fairhill. Can Hearts find the breakthrough? One far, Patterson to Clyman! Heads triumphantly past Thomas Cherney. Callum Patterson just gets so far above Liam Lindsay there. And Cherney couldn't get there, neither could Callum Booth on the line. A wonderful header from Callum Patterson. Robbie Nielsen so keen to keep a hold of Patterson. Here's the Erskine. Erskine onto his left foot again, tries to curl it beyond Jack Hamilton. And the keeper knew where that one was going and was able to get across and turn it behind. Can't get past Reras as he's breaks though for Erskine. Ryan Edwards is offering himself, so too Lawless. Just tries to dink it in. It's Chris Dillon with a shot. And again, Jack Hamilton gets down well and gets plenty behind it. Broke nicely for Chris Doolan again, and lovely, delicate pass from Lawless. Erskine gets it back once more. Bursting inside the penalty area, step over and then knocked behind by John Suter. Chris Erskine beginning to look in the mood. Well, he really is a fabulous player, almost creating something here. This is Erskine's corner. There's one by Lindsay, and it crosses the line, it has now. One way or the other, Party Thistle are level. It looked like Liam Lindsay's header might well have crossed the line, both Devine and that's definitely over the line. Daniel Devine was following up there, but the initial header from Liam Lindsay looked to have crossed the line. He's done well to roll, John Suter, can he get past Igor Rossi, the ball breaks for Erskine, feeds it for Doolin, he's onside, he's up against Reras, Doolin, claims again for handball, Ziggy Gordon, the most vociferous of those, but the assistant referee signals only for a throw-in, it definitely comes off the arm of Reras, you can see why Thistle are asking the question. There's Reras cutting in field, taking the shot on in the right foot, might break, for Curry, here is Curry. Once more, it's Jamie Walker. Good save, Cherney, and Lawless completes the clearance. And a series of chances here for Hearts. It was Reras with a couple of efforts. Then Curry picked out Walker, and Walker's shot from the tight angle pushed away. There's Tony Watt up against Ziggy Gordon, looking for Walker, but just. Didn't get the pass right, and Thistle are on the breakaway. Here's Callum Booth, gets it from Stephen Lawless, gets the head up. Callum Booth, half decent cross. Jack Hamilton puts something in this cross from Callum Booth. Fortunately for him, he broke to Igor Rossi. Otherwise, that could have been a winner for Thistle. June.
for Don Cowie. It's a good looking ball, out comes Cherney, gets plenty on it. Kitchen though charges it down. This is Tony Watt with a chance. It's got in. Tony Watt has won it for Hearts. In the final minute of the 90, Tony Watt's first goal for Hearts stuns the home crowd. From a tight angle, Thomas Cherney will wonder how he was beaten from here. I think he wanted a foul there. He's claiming there. He gets back in, but he couldn't keep that out. I thought we created a number of chances first half. I thought we were unlucky to go in a goal down, um, but thankfully we got back in it with a good set play. And we made another good opportunities. We got in good areas. I thought a final ball could have been that a little bit better. Um, and you've got to score when you get the chance against the top sides. We had a lot of possession, but we couldn't break them down. And you know, shot was inside, and we found it quite difficult. But we eventually got through, and we saw the quality of Tony Watt at the end there to get the finish. But Steve and I had spoke about possibly changing the shape to try and get a bit more of the game, but I didn't want to do it. I wanted to give Tony an opportunity because I knew that. He would create something. He managed to get him in a good position. You can see he's finished his top draw. The last gasp winner. A tale of two strikers for Hearts as well. Connor Salmon and Tony Watt. Michael, you've had your doubts over Connor Salmon. I think that's fair to say. Is that changing? Um, well, you're right. I'm, I'm not overly convinced, but I tell you, if he keeps putting in performances like he did yesterday, then he's certainly going the right way. Um, I think you, you see what he was doing yesterday is what you want and expect from a, a guy that's going to lead the line. You know, energetic, putting the defenders under pressure, but not just that, linking up well. We saw it last week as well, where he linked up really well with Don Kelly. And the clips here, another good ball from the defence into his feet, linking up well, holding it, but then making the movement and giving the, the guys that are supporting him options. But this man, Tony Watt, I've got no doubts about him. He's been a real success uh, for Hearts since he's joined. A good foil for Salmon as well, you know, somebody that's uh, got good movement, a, lot of, a bit of a, a smaller player to, uh, to Salmon. But this one here, where he, where he sniffs it out, you know, Hearts keep the pressure on, great little turn there and fires off the strike. It does take a little deflection I'm off the defender. You think the goalkeeper needs to do better. Yeah. But I just think that slight deflection has, has yeah. got past him. But you see, and you heard Robbie there talking about, you know, they were talking about maybe changing the formation, changing the, 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 the guys up top because they weren't able to they break them down. They've got options now. They do, they, they've got massive options. You know, they take off Nicholson and Salmon and bring on Walker and uh, Johnson, the new striker. Yeah. You know, they've got options in forward areas and that contributed to them winning the game yesterday. We saw Celtic earlier in the programme. They look ahead of most of the other sides in the division, I think, at this moment in time, that is fair to say. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they beat Hearts at Tynecastle yep. at the start of the season. But just how far away do you feel Hearts are? They're obviously, Tony Watts coming into the side, he's got his first goal now. How much of a challenge can they present this season? Well, I mean, I think you saw last year that there was progress made, there's no doubt, you know, finishing third, having come up their first season up. It's going to be very difficult for them to go and compete at the top end with, uh, with Celtic. But... You know, they're a team that, uh, a club at expectation levels that they've mm -hmm. got to be up there challenging. The gap's there, there's no doubt, but we'll wait and see. A lot of interest in Callum Patterson as well. How important is it that they hold on to him? Because I think it's Wigan Athletic have been mm -hmm. trying to sign him. I mean, is there backup there for Hearts if he goes? He's an important player, there's no doubt. Uh, he would be a miss, but I think, you know, in, in young Liam Smith, there is a replacement there if he was to go. But Hearts are in a comfortable position in that it's got to be a good fee Yeah, I think for they're well to short go. with the bid. I mean, yeah. I think they're talking seven, eight hundred thousand. I think they need to double that to yeah. even get negotiations started. In terms of Partick Thistle, Chris Erskine, once again, looking impressive yeah, for them, good. creating chances. They're just not taking their chances. I think that's the frustrating thing at the minute. You know, we watched them last week up at Pataudry, creating a lot of opportunities. Uh, yesterday, Archie was talking about the front four again being good. They did create a lot of chances. It was a really open game, a good game, but they're not turning those chances into goals. Uh, you know, and that's the, the thing that's stopping them at the minute. Okay.